Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to the uh, May 6, 2019, Port Authority board meeting. First order of business, minutes. We're going to try to chance to see the minutes. Do we have a motion to approve? I'll so move. We have a motion to approve. I'll second. second. Thank you, Mr. Garrett. Any comments, <coughs> any questions at all on the minutes of the prior meeting? Hearing none, we'll take a vote. All those in favor of uh, approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the minutes are taken care of. So comments from the public. Good to see you, Mr. Cooper. I have nothing. Okay, you get a chance later on. Great. All right, thank uh, you, sir. Mr. Kessel, may I ask a question? Yes. Sure. Mr. Cooper, uh, you you had you had your uh, safety school on the, what 15th, 17th? Uh, yes, we had. The How did that go? Did you have pretty good attendance? I believe that we did. I can't I can't give you a, excuse me. I can't give uh, the final because we haven't had meetings since then. Our meeting is, is tomorrow night, um, and we are scheduling another uh, safety. Uh, at least one more. We understand that the safety meeting that we had uh, put on by the Coast Guard over at, our, at, at the Yacht Club uh, will qualify uh, teenagers. They now must take a safety course before they can operate a personal watercraft and receive a certification. So the uh, sailing school uh, is helping to uh, uh, support and make sure that we will allow the training right local for uh, for that. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions to uh, to Mike, Mr. Cooper? Nothing. All right. Moving on then. Uh, report from the harbor master. All right. On the west parking lot out here, um, work continues. They're currently fitting in the final pieces of the uh, permeable paver blocks. You'll see that the asphalt's all down and some of the striping has gone in. I think the pavers is the last uh, part that still needs finishing. We've not had another master plan meeting since, well, a month or more ago. So I don't have a, a for sure answer on that. But just from observation, I think they're nearly finished with the parking lot. And I would expect within a week or two that it'll be usable. The 300 dock, on the other hand, is completely finished. And if you haven't had a chance, it's worth going out there and taking a look at it. I think Larson Danielson did a really nice job. Uh, we did run into April a little bit but they made some accommodations and with the weather it really didn't inconvenience anybody. So I think it turned out really nice and I haven't heard anything negative from any of the people on the 300 dock. They all think it's pretty nice. So I think we did a good job there. Uh, you'll also find in front of you uh, a letter that went out to all the former slip holders, transient types, people that we've had over the last couple of years. Um, you can read through it and if you have any questions. It basically talks about the new parking lot and some other features and, and invites them or reminds them that we're still here. So if they want to come back, we'd be more than happy. And one other thing that I expect Mr. Zachman to cover in more detail, you have a sheet that shows basically the history of this last auction. Uh, boats that were originally notified, three of which paid in full along the way. And then we had the auction and two of them uh, people actually bid on and two of them received no bids. And then Joe can go into more detail related to that. And then that's where I'll leave it for now unless anybody has any questions on anything. Questions for the Harbor Master? Anything? Go ahead. Uh, just information. Uh, do you have a do you have a, a rival date for the tour boat? Not currently. Um, 
ASAP, I think, is what Mr. Terry's plan is. I don't think the weather has cooperated. He was planning on doing some painting, and I believe he's stored outdoors, so he's had to paint in between rain showers and weather. But I know he's really desperate to get down here. So I expect him to show up at any time, but I don't have a firm date. Has there been any other conversation on the kayaks? No, nothing more. Uh, the last conversation he and I had, he planned to have the kayaks operational by Memorial Day. So that's, I think, his target date on that. And you said we're prepared, whatever our part is, or yeah. will be shortly. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. do, you have a, do you have an opening date for the Dockside Cafe? I do not. No, but I would think it's any time here. They may have been open this past weekend. I know the umbrellas were up, but I didn't go over there to see if anybody was there. But I would expect they'll start opening weekends here pretty quick if they have not already. Okay. Last meeting, you gave us a review as to your accomplishments on your winter projects. Mm -hmm. And you had two that were outstanding, the ice machine and the small barge. Right. The ice machines have been completed. We have not yet done the small barge. Okay. Is there anything happening on the ESD? I met with uh, Edgewater Resources and the electrician that we use, MB Electric, and we went out on the dock, looked at the boxes we have. Uh, there's a sample of a replacement box on the back counter if anybody wants to look at it. I think the direction between the electrician and the engineer that Colin's looking into, is it more expedient to replace the entire box or to try to retrofit the existing boxes with the GFI equipment? So you, you, would, have, you would have one control appliance per dock. Right. Yeah. So fundamentally you would have eight. New well, ones. no, they would be per slip if you go with the box. Per, per slip. The electrical code has kind of backed off of putting the main in, like what you're referring to, because it looks at accumulated leakage <clears throat> and it's too easy for a lot of small leaks to add up to a big leak that shuts the whole dock down. So they've changed their thinking on that a little bit. Now Indiana is not on the latest electrical code, at least not yet. And so what uh, Mr. Bassinger's suggestion was is we hold off on doing anything at the main power until that gets a little more sorted out, but that we look at regulating it at the individual slips. Now, when we first looked at this a couple years ago, the equipment that was then manufactured tripped at five milliamps, and that's too low of a limit. And so boats were tripping those routinely, even with nothing considered to be wrong. So now they make a, a breaker that would fit in there that trips at 30. And that has prevented a lot of the nuisance tripping, but still breaks the current before it reaches a dangerous level. Well, the method that you're looking at, does that, in, does that include a new enclosure or simply a breaker change? Well, that's what we're trying to determine right now. The problem we have with the boxes we have now is they're no longer manufactured. So when you have a lid that breaks or whatever, it's really hard to replace that. Also looking at the internals on how much room you have to fit the GFI stuff in there. It, it's not as easy apparently as just switching out the breaker, which I initially thought. Uh, there's a little bit more to it than that. So it may be more cost effective, at least on the labor side, to just put a new power outlet box at each slip as opposed to trying to fit the new equipment in the old box, especially with the age of the old box and knowing that we've had damage to some and you can't get parts for it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Tim. Mm -hmm. And as Edgewater gets more information, they'll update you, you'll right. update the fourth. Yep. All right. Thank you. Any other questions for Tim? Danny? Yeah, I guess Mr. Sandler brought up a question that 
kind of caught my thoughts too. We talked about the tour boat coming, and I don't know if it'd be worth it. I'd like, like to have that gentleman come here, maybe talk to us prior to starting it up, because I'm here and talk that the hours are going to be different, the times are going to be different, uh, cost, I don't know if it's the same or not, and also maybe something on the kayaks. Is there going to be any instructional to a kid? Is there an age limit on it? Uh, uh, how many people and such uh, just like to question more on the kayak he, he did talk about that I don't know if he brought that up to the board last, last fall I can't remember whether that was in like a subcommittee but that's a good point to make and he was uh, very at that time he was very concerned to make sure that people just didn't go out and end up mm -hmm. drowning mm -hmm. because there was I didn't know what to be doing that's, that's all. a good point <clears throat> Anything else? Anybody else have something for the Harvard Master? All right. Uh, Ms. Palicki is not here this evening. She has uh, she said a uh, once a grandchild was graduated from college, mm -hmm. so we pleasantly excluded her. That was, a, that was good. So, Mr. Frame, do you have something? Well, the main thing under Marianne is going to be the the letter and the auction. Mm -hmm. So if anybody has any questions about that, uh, was, I have a comment. The letter is well done. Yes. Was uh, Mr. Sefnew, were you going to comment extensively or so on? On, on the. Uh, would you like me to do some now? Uh, I'll go with you wait. Okay. I mean, were you prepared to take a look at it? Yeah. Okay. We'll just we'll wait. <laughs> and we'll take care of that later. Um, anything? Any questions for the administrator? Moving on, Mr. <coughs> Garrett, Budget and Financial Oversight. Okay, um, I just have the uh, bills, and I'm going to touch on a couple of them. Um, if you look at the fourth item down for $2,940.66, this is uh, cards, uh, card member services, which is uh, cable, picnic table supplies, etc. for that one, and if you go seven down from there for $3,017.73. This is for um, supplies for startup, which I don't know if the frame might be able to... Well, it's uh, soap, paper towels, cleaning supplies, bathroom cleaner, that sort of thing. Okay. And then um, one down from there for... Uh, $2,250. Um, this is for uh, JMB excavating, and that is uh, cleaning sand off the walkway to the pier. And one, two, three, four, five, four down from there for $1,789.61. This is uh, parts for uh, equipment repairs. And one below that for $14,401 is the MB electric bill for the uh, electric shock drowning check. And five from there, down from there, is for the new condensers and the three ice machines, and that's from uh, Wayne Heating and Air. So uh, if you take those six, it totals $32,142 of the $43,206.72. And which you'll see the other 16 or so are the remainder of that. And if there are no other questions, I would make a motion and pay our bills as presented. We have a motion to approve the bill for show. Do I have a second with a question? With the question, uh, go ahead with the question. Uh -huh. The uh, MB electric for 14000 what, what all does that entail? Well, it's several different things. I can give you a little more detail. MB electric uh, is the initial electrical inspection, and then they go through and test all the power outlets at Washington Park, Trail Creek, and... Uh, then we also did the, uh, we moved the electric feeding the pump out <coughs> down here. Last year with the water level coming up, some of the junction boxes went underwater. And so then that caused the pump outs to malfunction. So we moved those up above oh. the sidewalk mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. get them out of the water. Hmm. Yeah. But that's the, the inspection, that's part of the thing with the ship, right? Yeah. 
Okay. That, 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 that is fine. I, I, the way heating and air, uh, Tim, mm -hmm. the 7743. Yeah. Okay, we, put, explanation. we put new compressors on all the three ice machines. <clears throat> ice machines. Yeah. Think they'll uh, keep, them, uh, keep them together a few more well, hours? That's the plan. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anybody else? Okay. We'll take a vote on this one, sir. Okay. And all those in favor of the. Uh, uh, paying our bills as written, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, let's approve. Let's pay our bills. Uh, Mr. Haynes, claim any insurance? Um, I have nothing. Okay. No contact. Anything for, for, uh, for John? Anybody have a question for John? Okay, moving on. Port operations, personnel, marina policy. Um, pretty much covered all that I can think of that I had to, between everybody else <coughs> chiming in. I can't think of anything else right now. If anybody have a question for me, we'll work on it. Anybody else? All right. Moving on. Mr. Messina, Board of Communications Special Events. Well, the building season is pretty much underway when the first tournaments hit uh, our port, because we're the first port on the Great Lakes to have fishing tournaments, so those actually started uh, two weeks ago, really, uh, the Saturday in the snow. Uh, we, we knew we were out on the lake actually fishing and throwing snowballs <laughs> at each other from yeah across the boat. So it did come down that hard. We had some photos of it too, possibly bring in, but you may see them in some kind of magazine. But the next day was Sunday, and that tournament was canceled because of weather, lake conditions. So just a one day event. This past weekend, uh, we had a classic. Coho Club had the classic fishing tournament, which was really three days. A Friday is a memorial for Carl Hartman, one of our past boaters that used to be here and a great fisherman. Uh, we had a memorial for him uh, tournament, and I think they had 30 boats involved with that. Wow. Just a one day, kind of a fun thing. Um, go out and look for fish for the Saturday and Sunday, the big contest. Uh, we did uh, hold it this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Fishing uh, was close to phenomenal uh, as far as size of fish. A lot of big fish in the 20 pound range wow. were caught and brought in. Uh, Sunday being a really nice day, and you can see I got some sun myself and being on the back deck. It, uh, it turned out to be a good event. Uh, I know Probably they will come with a letter to the Port Authority for their involvement and assistance in it. And I think also for the uh, Yacht Club, because everything was held uh, in the pavilion there. They put side curtains up around the four sides and then uh, had another tent on the outside of it. So, uh, All the side curtains work. Uh, I guess okay, Mr. Cooper, you probably, you storm, I know. So. They're working fine. Yeah, no, this is your, just going into your second season, and it's, you, you had, them up, had them last year, the side curtains. Yes. And I don't know how some being used once, and I was curious so far. This is good. And now the total of five, uh, four or five times now. Good. They're quite a bit to store. I mean, they're big and bulky, but they have a, a facility, I guess, they can keep them in. And, so that was it. Uh, I personally was out here on the 300 dock during uh, the hot sun and stuff. Uh, the dock looked good. You can still smell the, uh, uh, what, the newness of them coming up. And also, I was out there during the rain. Wonder if they were going to be slippery with shoes on or something like that, and they were not. I mean, they, they were as good as could be. And uh, the boaters that are on the 300 dock, as Mr. Frame said, uh, all seem to be pleased with it. That's good. That's good. So that's all I have. Mr. John. I have a question, Dan. I know it would just be a guess on your part, but you're the expert here. What percentage? of the tournament fishermen would you say are local? Mm -hmm. The numbers are down this year. Probably 20% uh, are local. An awful lot from Michigan. A lot of guests, then. Yeah. A lot of guests from Michigan come down. Uh, we have some boats from Chicago come over. A couple from Wisconsin will come down the lake. Most of them come oh, Tuesday, Wednesday the lake so they can get out and fish and look around and find out, uh, have a game plan for. Okay. But uh, maybe 20% are local boats. Okay, thank you. Fortunately, the big winner, not to jump in, I think a $12,000 prize, or cash prize, was won by a boat out of Burns Harbor. 
a captain over there. Fished the tournament many years. I think I know it's the best he's done. So, <laughs> any, any questions from Mr. Messina? I, I happened to would be down a couple of times over the weekend and saw cartloads of fish. I mean, five, six at a time. <coughs> they were hauling, going someplace. I don't know. Guys were all ex excited, and then we watched a few over the weekend, you know, the last couple of weeks, bringing, bringing uh, off the pier. They were all big ones. I mean, I'm not a fisherman, but these babies were at least like this. That's cool. <laughs> but everybody was happy fishing. All right. Uh, unless there's anything else, we're moving on. Mr. Manor, Master Planning, Special Projects, Park Liaison. Um, yeah, Park Liaison, um, I have a couple things to talk about. Um, just for information for people, uh, including our board here, of course. The 2019 uh, boat race agreement has been signed by the Park Board. That will be from August the 1st to August the 4th. Um, it's the Great Great Lakes Grand Prix race is what we're talking about. Um, it'll be two days of racing this year, and uh, they're also going to have jet ski racing uh, added to the, I don't think they've had that before, so they're going to have jet ski racing this year. Um, the other thing is um, we're going to, the, the uh, the Michigan City Food Truck Festival license agreement has been signed also by the Park Board. This will be the third year they've had this, but they've got quite a few more of them coming. They have 20 food trucks, um, and that will be on Memorial Day weekend, May the 25th to the 26th, and it will be held at Fetters Alley. Uh, superintendent's report, uh, what did he say here? City Council workshop for uh, non-smoking for all city parks and playgrounds will be addressed at the next City Council meeting. That also includes the beach because the beach is a city park. So the uh, um, council is gonna take that up uh, at the next meeting from what they have said. So that's gonna be rather interesting. Uh, Sunset Grill opens on May the 22nd. Um, May the 11th and the 12th, uh, parking stickers are needed to get into the park. So, if you don't, what day was the May the 11th and 12th that weekend? If you don't have a parking sticker, you can't get into the park. And that's all I have for that. Is there any questions? Does anybody have uh, any questions on the park board portion of Mr. Manor's uh, address? Um, the other thing I have is, of course, on the, uh, uh, the bids that were due today uh, at 1 o'clock, um, the bids for the new bathhouse. Uh, we are going to have to extend that until the following meeting. Um, there are four or five different bids um, that went out. And one person who was very interested that wanted to get the bid in didn't get it in uh, because there was an, uh, a, a medical emergency in the family. And the other four or five, we never received bids for. So in talking to Roger, I told him that uh, we should extend this to the next meeting at one o'clock. Um, the bids have to be in by the 20th at, at one o'clock. And I told him to also go out and ask for some bids of some other companies. So we don't have to address that until the 20th. Um, see if Mr. Zach Newt has any comments on that. Well, so effectively we didn't receive any bids? No, no bids. Yeah, well then I think we can extend it to, to try right. to receive some bids. Right. I mean, otherwise we, we put something out for bid and we got no bids. Okay, do we have to do any more paperwork on something like that? I don't think so. Okay, and, and you've contacted Roger and Roger's going to pursue that? Yes, he is. We yeah. talked today. Okay. Roger being Roger Portrails, uh, the architect that's working through this on us. Okay. Although what, what he might want to say is he's, he's going to essentially tell the people that he's already uh, requested bids from uh, that they'll have additional time to yes, send he's, Yes, he's going to do that, but he's also going to look for some new people to sign. Right. I was going to say that he should probably open that up yes, to others he is. He's who perhaps couldn't have made it by this deadline right. so that they'll have an opportunity as well. 
Okay, so we hopefully we would uh, expect to have something at our board meeting on May 20th. At that time we'll take a look and probably best to uh, take a hard look at all those numbers, of course, as a board. Any questions on that? To me or to, uh, uh, to Bruce? John? Yeah, with the uh, new dock, the new planks on 300 dock, what was our plans to start the next dock next year? Uh, that was something we're going to bring up tonight, but we're still with, 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 okay. with Bruce on this subject of the spring point. I'd like to, okay. I'd like to finish up with that if there are no other questions on that. If, let's, we'll okay. get to that okay. shortly. Go ahead, Bruce, if you want to talk about that at all. Yes. Um, or anything else you have there. We had, no, that's the only other thing I have. Uh, uh, Tim and I have talked uh, in the past about when he thinks we should start it, whether we should start it now or whether we should leave to the fall, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let Tim speak to that. Well, my opinion would be if we are going to do another dock in time for next spring, or some combination of docks, we would look at putting it out for bid either now or in the summer. That would, for the work to start in October. And the reason for that is we experienced some uh, stress earlier this year on the timing of getting the wood. At one point it looked like that wood was gonna be 10 to 12 weeks out, which if that actually had been the case, they would only be starting on the dock now <laughs> instead of being finished by now. So if we put it out for bid here shortly, that gives the contractor, whoever we end up with, time to order the wood, time for it to get here. If they start the work in October, then they're just finishing up in the spring instead of trying to do the whole project all in the spring. This year, because of the delay of the wood coming in, it wasn't the 10 to 12 weeks, it was much shorter than that, but between bad weather and some delays on the wood, we ran into April, and I would hope we can avoid that if at all possible. Uh, this year, it wasn't a terrible inconvenience. We did move several people over to the 200 dock for a short period of time, but if we can avoid that, I think that'd be preferable. Okay, so what I hear is that we're going to be initiating that process slowly right. over the next few weeks, few months. Do we do we start the bid or the starting the trying to start the bidding process soon, or are we waiting until? Well, I think the first thing we would need to do, or the committee would need to do, is decide what, what we want to do next. Okay. Do we want to do the 200? Do you want to do the one and the 200? Do you want to do something on the other side? I mean, okay. decide what the next one is, then have Edgewater <coughs> put together a cost estimate for us, and then if we want to bid it, we go from there. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna call the committee meeting and we're gonna iron that all out. Okay. Well, oh, if, if this is going to be a, a, a political meeting on, or not meeting, a uh, question on which doc gets up next, you know, I, I hope everybody will speak up and speak up rather soon and give reasons why, because, you know, we're going to do them all. I mean, all six of these, and we're going to do them in succession as soon as we get kill we get. So if there's a real problem and which goes next, let's let it be known right away. Let, let, us, let us know your thoughts. So uh, just want to move forward on this. Okay, Bruce, you think all I have. any other questions for Bruce on this? John, did we take care of that yes. question? Yes. All right, Here, here's an opportunity to talk about the next step here, so. All right, anything else for Bruce on any subject? <coughs> the special project master planning. Hearing none. Uh, moving on, this is Mrs. Mira, Advertising Public Relations. I have nothing to re uh, report at this time. Uh, anything from Mrs. Mira from many of us? Okay. Okay, Mr. Zach Moon, uh, abandoned boats, particularly, I guess. 
Uh, as reflected on the, uh, the report on the uh, auction of the abandoned boats, I'm pleased to report that three of the voters did pay off their balances in full. Uh, unfortunately, those three were the three with the lowest balances, uh, leaving four boaters who have outstanding balances. Uh, two of their uh, boats had no bids. Uh, that would be Second Wind and Slacker. Uh, two of the boats, Set a Hook and Mass Confusion, uh, were uh, bid on and sold, uh, but leaving pretty significant balances on those. Uh, what I would propose to the board is that over the, the next several days, I could put together uh, a memorandum to the board which uh, talks about what it would cost to go forward if we were to go the small claims route based on the experiences that we had a couple of years ago with a couple of folks that we took to small claims court. Uh, talk about what the cost is involved. Uh, we'll need witnesses to testify. Generally, they come out of the staff, out of the office. Um, and what the likelihood is that we will recover any money. I noticed that two of the voters, uh, one is from Michigan, uh, one is from Illinois. And the problem with that is when you, if and when you get a, a judgment in one state, you've got to go to the state in which that person resides to try to collect on that, which means there's another lawsuit. In other words, you got to open another case in their home state so that the courts in their home state can act upon them. An order from a LaPorte County court to somebody in Illinois it isn't worth very much because the, the, the Illinois court is the one that's going to have to enforce it. So what I would do is put together that memorandum and then perhaps at the end uh, of the next meeting, we could go into executive session because this would involve threatened litigation and then the board can decide if they want to pursue any or all or none uh, of the voters whose votes were not sold or were sold but with a, a, a balance for money. Um, we had one interesting uh, event that popped up, and that was uh, one of the successful bidders took all the paperwork that we provide uh, to the Bureau of Motor Vehicles and sought to get his title. And uh, the, the lady at the Bureau of Motor Vehicles told him he can't get a title which obviously uh, upset him a bit. And then I got a call from Mary Ann, double check the statute, we did everything right. Uh, and I called the Bureau of Motor Vehicles, uh, talked to uh, a woman there. Uh, she told me that the issue was worse to the effect of above her pay grade and that she would send it down to uh, Indianapolis. Uh, the following week, I got a call from the supervisor, the person in charge of all these uh, uh, title transfers. And she told me that there were so few of these things, uh, people applying for titles based on an abandoned boat auction, that they just they screwed something up in the, uh, in the little pamphlet that they send out to the local boards. She confirmed that we were correct. They just want us to use a new form from this point on. So I've shared that form with Mary Ann, so if and when we have another abandoned boat auction, we'll use their preferred uh, uh, form of application for title. Uh, but I, I was pleased to hear that I knew how to read the statute, <laughs> that I read it correctly, and that what I learned in law school is the statute is the law, and it controls what was borne out. Uh, and that's all I have. Now, what I understand, what I understand is you're going to have a member of an MOU and kind of let us know what your feelings are, and then I believe if, if the board feels like moving towards something, you're feeling that we need to go into an executive session to do that. That's correct. So the executive session is not automatic from your standpoint. It's only if we want to proceed. Well, what I what I prefer is that uh, after the board members have had an opportunity to look over the memorandum, if there's going to be discussion about whether to move forward, it should be an executive session. But not immediately following next meeting. You're not saying that. We could. could. I mean, that would make it more convenient <coughs> for board members, so we wouldn't have to have a separate okay, uh, executive yeah. session. Okay, let's leave that option open. Uh, I, 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 I just wanted to ask Joe... Uh, this roughly twelve thousand dollars mm -hmm. that we've lost up to this point. How does that compare with your experience from last year? This is more. Uh, the last time, I, my memory is that both of them were in small claims, which is under seven thousand dollars. And if I recall correctly, they were pretty significantly under uh, seven thousand dollars. So I think this is more. 
had those three voters not paid in full, it would have been a heck of a lot more. Uh, you know, 2000 and 2000 and then one for uh, $1,230. Uh, but it's, it's significant. My concern is I... Uh, articulated a moment ago is that a couple of these guys are out of state right. and one of the experiences we had at the last time was a gentleman who was from Illinois and I had to go into the Illinois court well in, in, from my perspective of course uh, the money that is owed us is important but it's also important to me that voters understand that there's just no free ride down right. here. That if you attempt a free ride, you you know, there are going to be consequences for that. Exactly. And up until a few years ago, uh, it was sort of come see, come saw. Sometimes we did, sometimes we didn't. And it, it's come home to haunt us, frankly. Sure. Yeah, I, I think what it will come down to is a, a cost-benefit analysis. If, for example, if it's going to cost us eleven hundred or twelve hundred dollars to sue somebody with a twelve hundred dollar balance, and the likelihood of recovering any of that is less than fifty-fifty, then that's a decision that the board could make to say, well, it's not worth it. But for somebody with a higher amount who may have substantial assets, then it might be something worth pursuing. Thank you, Joe. Okay. Now, your MOU, you you let it get to us and explain to us. I uh, would, would want you to also give a recommendation on each one of these. That's correct. Right. Gotcha. Maybe a question, maybe for our attorney. Uh, and I know the ones we had last year, we did go out to small claims. We did get a judgment. How yes. long are the judgments good for? Did uh, not. 10 years initially, and then they can be renewed for another 10 years. Okay. So we still could. They're, yeah. they're collecting these people. Yeah. After 20 years, if you don't collect, it's it's gone. That's the statute of limitations. But it's initially 10 years, and then it can be renewed for another 10 so years. So if they sell property or do some kind of transaction, it's going to come back again. Right. The only thing that could cut that off is a bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. Maybe one other is uh, take about a boat here that was sold. Uh, uh, how does that work again? We have an, they had a balance of thirty six hundred dollars, mm -hmm. and it sold for a lot less than that. Do they pay the balance of what's due on it? Yeah, the balance is, is then owed plus, uh, as reflected in the slip license agreement, attorneys' fees, costs, and interest. Yeah. Here's your chance. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. All right. All right. Anybody else have a question for Mr. Jackman? All right. Do we have any new business to come before the board? Do we have any old business to come before the board? <coughs> Mr. Johns. I, I just want to. I'm going to share with the board something that the staff did that I think was just really unique and uh, important. What they did. They took those old racks that we had on the outside of the building and they refurbished them and repaired them and prepared them for use uh, for a, a different kind of use and of course a use that, that didn't have to have near the load bearing capacity that they had when they had boats in them. And, so they took those old racks and did the repair on them and painted them. And uh, that does several things for us. Believe it or not, Trail Creek Marina now has effectively 48 new automobile parking places they didn't have before these racks were set up. These racks have 48 cubicles. That means that all the trailers at least 48 of the trailers that are normally stored over at Trail Creek are going to be in the racks and out of the way. Uh, it's, Tim, it's innovative. Uh, I, I just think the staff really needs to be complimented for that. It looks nice. Mm -hmm. It does. And also it provides, I think, a real convenience for your staff 
knowing where every customer's right. boat trailer is located yeah. down to the number. Right. So it's just another example of the Port Authority moving forward, developing its property, you know, developing its ability, mm -hmm. and uh, you guys just keep getting better. <laughs> so, uh, here's a couple of pictures. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Any down there? I've seen that. It looks nice. Any other uh, old business to come before the board? Any other comments on any of the old business we've done? Well, so yes. Yes. Mr. Cooper, you were signaling that you have lots to talk about. Was that I right? have nothing to talk about. <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, I have just one, one comment uh, before we adjourn is that uh, tomorrow's election day. And uh, not a lot of people in this world have the opportunities that we have in this country. Be sure and vote tomorrow. I'll take a motion for adjournment. Make a motion we adjourn. Motion accepted. I'll second. We are, we are adjourned. Uh, adjourned. Excuse me. Uh, the next meeting is two weeks from today on May 20th. Yes. Yes.